Now I know y'all been staring at this box over here for a long time. And it's finally time to pick this thing up. You didn't see that coming, did you? Hi there, Adam here. Today we're going to do an XDA unboxing of the Samsung AT&T Galaxy S4. So let's get started. So here we have the AT&T Samsung Galaxy S4. And here we have a box inside of a box. And we have a quick start guide. And this uh, is kind of a unique look here with all this wood style finishing. Guys, pretty standard stuff. And here we have the uh, so, and here we have the Samsung Galaxy S4. Texting and driving, it can wait. Looks pretty darn similar to the Galaxy S3. As you can see here, pretty much uh, everything is about the same dimensions. It wouldn't surprise me if maybe you could fit some of the same cases on the device. You have nothing to lose. Health, safety, and warranty guide. A white USB cable. This is micro USB. Headphones with play and pause, as well as volume up and volume down buttons. These are standard earbuds with four poles, so they likely also have a microphone as well. Yep, microphone hole built in right there. 5 volt, 2 amp charger with USB port. And finally, we have the battery. This battery is a 2600 milliamp hour battery at 3.8 volts. And let's turn it on. Here's they put a black uh, finish over the front of it. Alright, so this is running Android 4.2.2. We're running a 3.4 kernel. So let's turn this thing right back off. So we're going to start by removing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. So now we'll use a guitar pick to separate the front from the back. Now we'll begin removing these connectors that are securing the board to the device. This is a pretty interesting camera module. You'll notice that usually what you see on these devices is there will be a cover right here on the device on the back panel. But in this case, what they've done is they've actually made the camera module completely self-contained. And uh, that's kind of a new technique. I've never really seen that before. And this is the full camera with lens, cover, and everything required. So I kind of like this because there's no dust going to get inside of this. And now we can remove the micro SIM and SD card shield. And let's go ahead and remove this EM shield as well. Here's a close-up of the board for you guys. The first thing I'm noticing right offhand is that there are no real impact areas here and that is very different from anything that I've seen on a Samsung device before. Alright, so this uh, T-Mobile and the AT&T versions are the exact same board. And these each represent a binary number, a one or a zero. What's going on here? These ground. Okay, so this is ground over here. And then we have a pad that you could solder a resistor to, like you know that or something like that. And then it goes straight across and then goes back out to ground. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Now they did the same thing right here. We have ground on that side and ground on that side so what is the purpose of this component here is that just spare this would be a debug port of some kind and the debug port is something that I find to be the most interesting part of the device 
And there we go. Now, DJR Bliss came up with this really cool method of exploiting the bootloader on the Samsung Galaxy S4. And the way this works is you take a specially crafted header to a kernel or a recovery if you want. And basically what it does is it jumps out of where it's supposed to load and jumps into the bootloader, overrides part of the bootloader, and tells the bootloader to just bypass all the security checks. We're going to root and install a TWRP recovery. This uses a few exploits by Dan Rosenberg, so let's go ahead and do it. So now it's pushing over the tools right now, and it's pushing the recovery to the device. Now it's performing Dan Rosenberg's root exploit, and finally what it's going to do is it's going to install a recovery to the device. Now we can hit OK to reboot, and we have a win. So yeah, I mean, it's just that easy for now, but you know, it seems that Samsung's really forgetting, you know, the people that, you know, made them who they are. I kind of feel like, you know, without the XDA developers community, Samsung wouldn't have gained as much support as they do. I mean, it's the geeks, the guys like you, the guys like me, who get these phones because we love them so much and we want to work with them and we talk about them and we tell other people about them that really makes the Samsung line successful. But without that, where would they be? I'm just saying, I think they're really forgetting where they came from. That's about all for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and add me to your circles on Google+. Go to plus.adamoutler.com. Remember, if you can't do with it as you choose, it's not yours. Hack on.